Hi, everyone. This is the moment the Lord has given us. Welcome to this channel, which focuses on the truth, the truth which is found in the Word of God. I'm delighted. I'm happy. I'm grateful. I'm glad. For this is the moment the Lord our God has given us, so that you may hear what He has in store for us. Our Lord is so good. He is the stronghold in the time of trouble. So we have been going through a series of exploring the minor prophet. We have looked at the book of Hosea, the book of Joel, the book of Amos, the book of Obadiah, the book of Jonah, the book of Amos, the book of Micah, the book of Nahum. And now we are looking at the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk, in the way the Bible is arranged, is the eighth minor prophet. And uh, rumors say, or history say, but there is no evidence in the Bible that this prophet gave his prophecy between 650 to 627 BC. And uh, this prophet, we are when he is the one who wrote the, the book of prophet, Habakkuk has got three chapters. Chapter 1 has got 17 verses. We are going to see here now uh, the, the prophet complaining about God. Because God was going to use evil people who are more evil than the Israelites, particularly this time the, the Judah, to correct them, to punish them. Chapter 2 has got uh, 20 verses. We see now the prophet praying and waiting upon the Lord. The Lord does not give him the direct answer, but somehow God responds to him. Chapter 3, we see now the prophet praising the Lord. Now, uh, the, the name Habakkuk means embrace. And there is little record in the Bible concerning him. There is nothing which we have been given. We, are, we have not been given the details of who Habakkuk was. When did he minister? There is no historical record which is given. Now, the, the, the book of Habakkuk, it is a very important book, particularly to the people who feel uh, as if God is not fair in what he is doing. Uh, Habakkuk and the same feeling, the same struggle that we go through today as believers. Because at times we see as if God is not making sense. At times we see the evil people appearing to progress. Now, so this prophet Habakkuk, uh, in this introduction of the book of Habakkuk, uh, in chapter 1, we, we see Habakkuk uh, wrestling with the God. We see Habakkuk complaining. So the two sees in chapter 1. We see Habakkuk uh, wrestling about God, complaining about God. What's he, what, what is he complaining about? Habakkuk lived during a reign of an evil king who did not fear God. In the southern kingdom, there was a king by the name Josiah who started the ruling at the age of eight years and indeed what was good before the presence of the Lord. But now the prophet who took after, the prophet who took after Josiah, he was a weakened uh, king. The king who took after jo Josiah was a weakened king. He didn't fear God, but he led Israelite to go astray. Actually, in the book of Second Kings, it is recorded that uh, apart from Josiah, before Josiah, and even after Josiah, there was no any other king which Israel and who feared the Lord with all his heart, and who served the Lord with all his heart. And actually, as we know, that is the greatest commandment which God gave. To fear the Lord with your heart, it means to pursue God, to pursue the character of God, to desire to know the character of God, to desire to fellowship with God. So King Josiah, it is recorded that uh, he, was, he was the best king which uh, Judah ever had. And even after other kings, 
nobody really who was like Josiah. So uh, I read a scripture here on that account concerning Josiah on what is recorded on him. If you want to see the history of Josiah and the way he ruled, you can you can look you are you are going to, to see it in the book of Second Kings. So Josiah did a lot of reformation uh, to the to the kingdom to the kingdom of Judah. Even if this time around now it had been defiled with so many images. But this king by the name Josiah, you can see the, the, the history of this king in the book of Second Kings uh, chapter 21. Beginning from uh, verses 19. Or I'll start from the second king chapter 22. Whereby you are going to see. Josiah was 8 years old when he became king. So you can see even when you are young, God can still use you to do his will. So Josiah led the Israelites to do a lot of reformation. And even he renewed the covenant with people. And all the practices which were instituted by God, they were they were re reinstated. And Josiah did away with all the witchcraft, all the Indians who were in the land. I, I read in the second Kings chapter 23, verses 24 says, Furthermore, Josiah got rid of mediums and the spirits the household guns, the idols, and all other detestable things seen in Judah and Jerusalem. This he did to fulfill the requirement of the law written in the book of that Erechiah, the priest, and discovered in the temple of the Lord. Neither before, I'm now reading Second Kings chapter 23, verses 25. Neither before, nor after Josiah, was there a king like him, who turned to the Lord as he did, with all his heart and with all his soul, and with all his strength, in accordance with all the law of Moses. So you can see Josiah was a king who feared the Lord, though he began to reign at a very tender age, he did what was right before the Lord, and he brought a lot of reformation. Now, the king who took over after Josiah, he was an evil king. And indeed, what was evil before the Lord? Actually, he reigned only for three months. He is called Joaz. Joaz was 23 years old when he became the king and he reigned in Jerusalem for three months. After three months now, this king was killed. And the other king by the name Joachim took over. So the purpose for this history, which you can get uh, in the book of Second Kings from chapter 23 all the way to 24, is for you to realize that uh, the condition in which now this prophet was prophesying. So Jehoaz was an evil king, even Joachim, who took over after Jehoaz, and all these kings, they led Israelite astray. So in chapter 1, we see this prophet complaining, wondering, why does God remain silent when the wicked are prospering? Why does not God do something when the wicked are driving in business, in politics, in all aspects of, of life when the wicked are driving? So this uh, prophet was twinned. He was he was he didn't really understand the working of God. He didn't know how God operated, and now he complained. He restores. Chapter 1, we see him wrestling, wondering when will the weekend prosper? When will the weekend continue prospering? When will the weekend be punished? When will God bring judgment to his people? At the same time, now, in the process of Abacook complaining, he realized that uh, though the rich were oppressing the poor, though also the poor were oppressing each other, the priests were not obeying God. The leaders were just working for the money. Then at the same time now, he realizes that God would use a nation which was more evil than them. God would make use of Babylonian, who by this time now were becoming superpowers. 
as an instrument to correct, to correct, to correct Israelite. That is the, the, the that is Judah, the southern kingdom. And now this prophet, he was wondering, and he was telling God, no, it, it cannot be. How can you use Babylonians? And they are worse than us. How can they use them to correct us? And we are better than us. And even at times, there is a time when we compare ourselves with the other people. And we see ourselves, we are better. And when we compare ourselves with some people, maybe what they have did or what they have done, we see they have done something worse than what we have done. And now when we see them, they are not facing the same challenges we are facing. We, we, we start to wonder what criteria is God using? To correct people, what method is God applying in correcting this kind of people? So, uh, after now, this prophet complains in chapter 1 of Abakub, verse 1 all the way to 19, concerning the way the injustice were not being corrected, the way uh, God would use Babylonian, though they were weakened, and Judah to correct them, to punish them in captivity. In chapter 2, you see now, God is responding, although not directly. And by now, we see this prophet applying three Ds. Watching and waiting. Watching and waiting. Chapter 3 of Habakkuk talks about him watching and waiting. Verse 1 of Habakkuk chapter 2 says, I will stand at my guard post and station myself on the tower. And I will keep watch to see what he will say to me. And what answer I will, I will give when I am reproved? So we see now in chapter 2, after now this prophet has wrestled with the questions, he has complained, he has wondered. We see now him here in chapter 2 waiting upon the Lord. And as he was waiting upon the Lord, watching and waiting, of course through prayer, we see God responding. God responded in chapter 2, verse 2. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and engrave it plainly on clay tablets, so that the one who reads it will run with it. So that is what God responded to him. For the vision is yet for the appointed future. Though it may tarry towards the goal of fulfillment, it will not fail. Even though it delays, wait patiently for it, because it will certainly come. It will not delay. So the vision was for the appointed time, the day which God himself had appointed. That is when he would bring justice to the Israelite and also to the neighboring countries who are oppressing Israelite. Even if it appeared as if it was not happening quickly, God himself knew the exact time when it would be fulfilled. Verse 4 says, look at the proud one. A saw is not right within him. This proud one we are referred to Babylonia, the Candia, who were to punish Israelite, who are to be used by God with an instrument. But the righteous will live by his faith in the true living God. So the, the Candian, the Babylonian, were proud. They were people who were very proud and they didn't actually believe in God. Yet God decided to use them to correct is people. Now, uh, verse 4, it is very important that uh, of Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, that then just shall live by faith. Not by what they know, not by what they think, not by what they see. Actually, what is seen, it is not faith. Faith, it is the evidence of the things hoped for. It is the substances it is the substance of the things not seen. It reached chapter 11. So the just shall live by faith. So God tells Habakkuk, My son, rest. Believe in me. Adhere in me. Rely on me. And then we are going to live by faith. Not what you think. Not what you imagine. Not what you see. But by faith. By faith in what? In the true living God. That God is on the throne. He is in the church. He is supreme, he is sovereign, he reigns. Though the injustices appear to be driving now, a time is coming when God, in his own divine purpose, he will do away with all the injustices. So, Apostle Paul, in the book of 
Romans chapter Romans chapter 1 verse 17 he applied this is he applied this and he said that the just shall live by faith I read Romans chapter 1 verse 17 for in the gospel the righteousness of God is revealed both springing from faith and leading to faith disclosed in a way that he awakens more faith as it is written and forever remains written the just and the upright shall live by faith. So my dear people, it is not about the activity. It is about faith in God. Faith in Jesus Christ. That is what gives the believer. There are so many things which we question. There are so many things which are not revealed. But when the book of Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 29 says that the revealed things belong to the Lord our God. I mean, the, the, the things which are in them belong to the Lord our God. But the things which have been revealed belong to us and to our children. So there are things which God has revealed to us. And there are others which have not been revealed. But what has been revealed, it is enough to make us believe and to trust in the true living God. So there are some things which you are going through as a child of God right now. And you do not understand. Even if you apply logic there will be no sense. Even if you, are, you apply analytical, even if you, anal, you analyze them, uh, in using any evidence, em, em, empirically, they will not make any sense. So, uh, so faith, it is required for eternity. The kingdom of God requires faith. Without faith, actually, if you use chapter 11, verse 6 says, it is impossible for us to Please God. Because the one who comes to God must believe that God is and he is the one who blesses those who believe in him. So God exists. God is there and he is the one who, who uh, rewards those who seek him diligently. Also, this verse is applied by Apostle Paul in the book of Galatians chapter 3, verse 11, when he is discussing about then justification by faith. The righteousness which we receive through faith. Faith which brings righteousness. Faith in what? Faith in Christ Jesus. So Paul, when he was teaching Galatians, the people of Galatians, who had begun in the spirit, and now they were turning to ratios, they were turning to work, instead of believing in the, in the blood of Jesus, instead of believing that they were saved through Christ Jesus, Instead of believing that they were complete in Christ Jesus, that when they had received Christ Jesus, then all oh, what the Lord required had been fulfilled in them. So you see Paul here rebuking them and even calling them foolish, asking them who has bewitched them, who has made them not to believe in the true living God, who has made them not to believe that in Christ Jesus, our old nature has died and now we are new creation. Now that the Old as God, the new has come in Christ Jesus. So in verse 11, we see Paul telling them that, uh, let me read in Galatians chapter 3, verses 11, which say that uh, now it is clear that no one is justified. Justified here means declared free of the guilt of sin and its penalty and placed in the right standing before God by the law. For the righteous, the just, the upright, shall live by faith. So here, Paul was a student of the Bible. He is quoting or he is applying the verse in Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 4. That uh, there is no one who is credited acceptable before God. Justified means uh, declared free from sin, from the penalty of sin, from the presence of sin and from the power of sin, through activity, through observing the law. This comes only through faith. Faith in what? Faith in Jesus Christ. Faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross for you and for me. That is the through which now we are justified. And my dear people, wherever you are, this verse in the book of Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4, it is very powerful for you to realize that uh, believing, trusting, Adhering in Christ Jesus, that is what makes you to be free from the sin. That is what gives you power to overcome sin. 
That is what gives you power to say no to all ungodliness. And then finally, the verse is also quoted in the book of uh, in the book of Hebrews, chapter ten. Hebrews chapter ten, uh, verses that uh, seven. You see that verse quoted there, whereby it is written that the just shall live by faith. And I want to, to read that book, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 7 uh, to that 8. For in just a very little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. Verse 8. But my righteousness one will live by faith, and if he shrinks back, I will not be pleased with him. So this this is being quoted from the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 4. That then just shall live by faith. So my dear people, I appeal to us that it is critical. It is very, very important for us to have faith in God. To believe in God, to trust in God, to depend on God in everything. And God will never leave us nor forsake us. So in chapter 2, we see the prophet waiting and watching through prayer. And finally, in Chapter 3, which has 19 verses of Habakkuk, we see now this prophet. It is a kind, it is a, it is actually, it is a, a poem of praising God, of worshiping God, of glorifying God, of declaring who God is. So, uh, it is also called the prayer of Habakkuk, and this is the prayer of praising God, of acknowledging God, of knowing who God is. So the book of Habakkuk can be summarized this way. That in chapter 2, we see this prophet using the three C's. I mean, using two C's. Number one, he is complaining and wrestling with God. Uh, chapter 2, we see the prophet watching and waiting upon the Lord. And, and chapter 3, we see the prophet worshipping the Lord. So very simple. Breakdown. Of the, prop, of the book of Habakkuk, chapter 1, wrestling and complaining, of course, with God. Chapter 2, waiting and watching. Chapter 5, I mean chapter 3 of Habakkuk, worshipping the Lord. So, a contrast. When you compare prophet Habakkuk and the prophet Jonah, there is this contrast. Habakkuk, uh, initially, was not agreeing with God. But there is something which is very, very, very important for us, which is descendant to do. In descendant to watch and to wait upon the Lord on the mountaintop of prayer. So though there, there were so many things which you didn't understand how they were going about, the prophet descendant to wait upon the Lord on the, on, on the mountaintop through prayer, and they drew worshiping the Lord. And actually the Lord appeared. The contrast now comes to this other prophet by the name of Jonah. Jonah descended to rebel and to run away from the Lord. Because God was not making sense to Jonah. Uh, remember the Assyrian were like the Al-Shabaab or the Isis. They, are, they, are, they, they were so brutal. So God was not making sense to Jonah at this time. God sending him to these people to preach to them. And what did Jonah decide to do? Jonah decided to run away from the Lord. And when he ran away, he realized later that you cannot run away from the presence of God because God is everywhere. God is everywhere. So from these two prophets, Jonah uh, spoke to God when he was the, in the stomach of the fish which had swallowed him. That is when now he came to his senses. When he was almost dying, when he was in danger, when he was helpless, when he was hopeless, when he didn't know what to do, he came to the sense to his senses and he acknowledged the Lord. This other prophet, he descended to run to the mountaintop to the, to prayer. He descended to watch and to wait upon the Lord. And actually, those who wait upon the Lord, actually, the Bible says that blessed are those who wait upon the Lord, for the Lord shall renew their strength. So even you, you can make a choice. You can either decide to be Jonah, to run away from the Lord when the Lord appears not to make sense. Mark my lips, the Lord appears. 
in our lives, there is a time when, when ways of the Lord may appear to you as if they are not sensible. But all the time, God is sensible. Even if we appear to be not sensible, God is always sensible. So it is the choice which you make whether to run away from the Lord. And then when you run away from the Lord, of course, challenges will come, which will, be, which will almost kill you. In that time now, you come to your senses and you acknowledge God. Or we'll be like Abacook, or those we don't understand what God is doing in our life, in, in our society, we know, we realize that God is working. And instead of complaining, instead of running away, we wait upon the Lord through prayer, through watching, and the Lord will appear. And God will speak to us. Of course, everything will not be clear to us. Not be deceived. In this life, there are so many things which will never be clear to you. That is why faith is required. Faith in God, to trust in God. Entirely requires faith. And God will ensure that you develop faith in each and every person. And through faith in God now, that is when we are justified. Everything will not be black and white in your life, in my life. Because when, if it is that way now, then we will not see any reason to depend on the Lord. But in the kingdom of God, we operate by faith. Faith in God who is everlasting. Faith in God who knows our future. Faith in God who knows our tomorrow. Just as Jesus and faith in his father. Actually, he trusted him. He knew that he would resurrect him from the dead, as he told him. Because Christ was slain before the foundation of the earth were established. So even to us, we ought to have faith in the true living God. And my prayer to us is that we shall watch and wait and praise the Lord all the days of our life. Our dear everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus, even as you have seen the book of Habakkuk, who initially was complaining and wrestling with you, wondering when you would execute judgment, wondering why you would use Babylonia, who are weakened, to punish Judah, which was better than them in the eyes of this prophet. Almighty Lord, later on you opened his eyes and he descended to watch and to pray at the mountain top. And in the process, oh God, you revealed some things to him, although not everything. And you taught him, oh Lord, that the, the, the just are supposed to live by faith and not by sight. Help us, oh God, in our generation, that your mighty Father, we shall live by faith and not by sight in the mighty name of Jesus. Faith in you all the days of our life, that Job our God, we shall rely, we shall trust, we shall adhere, we shall depend on the finished work of your son, Jesus Christ. Because we are justified by faith. Faith in your son, Jesus Christ. In faith alone are we justified, O oh Father. Not because of anything which we can do, or which we did, or which we will ever do. But it is by the precious blood of Jesus, which was shed on the cross for you and for me. And now we are blessed of the Lord. Because Christ became a curse for us. Even as we see in the book of Galatians, chapter 3 and verse 13. Whereby? You, are, you have taught us, O God, that even your son became a curse just for me and just for other people who believe in him. So that in him, O Lord, we may not perish, but in him we may live and we may have our being. This moment, O God, I pray, when for those who are running away from you, that your Father, you will open their eyes so that they may come to you in humility. And your Father, we know whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved in the mighty name of Jesus. May we not stay under the curse again because Christ was crucified on the cross so that we may become one blessed as we see in the book of Galatians chapter 3 and the verses 13. May we stay in the freedom which Christ has given us O Lord because Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. And now we are no longer condemned but we are free. Even Job our Father as this channel focuses on the freedom which we have in Christ Jesus. I pray for my viewers wherever they are, that none of them shall stay under the curse of the law, but they are going to embrace the freedom which we have in Christ Jesus. May we always praise you. May we always acknowledge you in each and every aspect of our life. In Jesus' name, I pray this believing and trusting. Amen. Thanks so much for taking your time to study with me. Uh, you can find other studies in my YouTube channel, whereby we have already studied the minor prophet, by the name and Nahum, eh, 
Obadiah, Joel, Mika, Obadiah, you uh, and Osea. You are going to see all those studies also on the book of and Daniel. You are going to see those studies in my YouTube channel. You can also assess other content concerning the topical which I, I have handled, particularly on family. You, you are going to see them, the purpose of family, uh, what is the purpose of family, how can we live a fulfilling life as family, how can we glorify God as a family, how can you identify the right partner, and how can you live where once you begin your marriage, you are going to see all that and much more, which God has enabled me to share with us for the glory and the honor of our Lord. So God bless you and keep you. Remember to like, also to share this teaching with the other believers and the other people so that they may know the truth which is found in the word of God. And also remember to subscribe and also to, to hit that notification bell so that whenever I upload a video, you are notified so that we may continue studying together. So God bless you and keep you. We are going to continue to see other studies in the book of Habakkuk. This was an introduction whereby we have seen uh, this prophet wrestling, complaining, waiting, watching, and finally worshiping the Lord. Those five W. Uh, complaining, wrestling with God, waiting, watching, and uh, worshiping the Lord. God bless you and keep you as you continue learning the ways of the Lord.